Hey guys, what's up? Kind of screens here. Bringing you guys my Goat Chaos deck profile. Um, I've been playing a decent bit of Goat format recently because that's around the time. Well, not. That wasn't when I first started, but it was a little tiny bit before. It was like, um. Actually, I guess it was more so Yu Gi Kaiba format. Uh, it was towards the middle slash end of Yuga Kaiba format. And I'd say in the middle of Yuga Kaiba format when I started playing. Um, so, out of all the formats, uh, uh, well, a little bit after that cross format, because I've been playing ever since Yuga Kaiba, um, I've been just kind of really just going through and reminiscing through all the different formats, um, the main legacy formats being built format, UD Hybel format, Teledad format, Necroz format, um, and my two favorites were always Necroz and, um, I always liked Necroz and, and um, uh, GOAT format, so, almost a UD Hybel format, um, it's not that those other two are bad, I just don't like them as much, but anyway. Um, the first thing I'm going to notice is this is a very unique build. I built this deck myself just from looking at the ban list. I didn't look up any deck bars or anything, so I just, I just straight up looked at the ban list and made it as I wanted to. Um, so let's go ahead and hop into it. First off, we have the Morphing Jar. Um, this card is basically an enhanced card destruction on legs. Well, I guess I should say an applaud because it doesn't have legs. I, I, uh, or at least I hope it doesn't. Anyway, um, both players discard their entire hands and then draw five cards. With hand destruction, it's a bit more tamed. You discard your entire hand and then draw cards equal to the amount you discarded. With this, if you really wanted to, you could have one card in hand, that being Sinister Serpent, discard it, which is essentially a plus one in this case for you, and draw five. Or, you don't have any in hand and you draw five for no reason, which is just... <laughs> this is like... This is this is basically the precursor of Max I mean, it was, it was awesome. Moving on, you have one copy of Sangin to search out... Basically... <laughs> Basically, anything. <laughs> anything, basically. Um, next up, Tribe Infecting Virus is also at one, just because um, this is a very good out to almost anything on the field. Um, DD Warrior Lady. Um, Shinzo? I don't think too many people are on that. Um, definitely BLS. Um, and overall, it's just a pretty decent card, especially as a 16k, uh, 1.6k beat stick. Um, next up, we are running one copy of the Warrior Lady. This is just for banish, uh, just banishing purposes. I know they're out to BLS, and they're out to Jinzo, whatever the big threatening watch on the board is, you can just get rid of it. Moving on, um, Injection Fairy Lily. I, I don't see this in too many decks, uh, uh, especially around GOAT format, honestly, which kind of surprised me, because this is a good card. Uh, basically, you pay 2k, and it's 34k. This also will work if you're attacking directly with it, so you can pay 2,000, which is a fourth of your life points, to take out practically half your opponents, which is insane if it's a direct attack, and even then it just gets over anything, including a BLS, uh, Jinzo, whatever you want it to, you know? Um, finally for the kind of smaller monsters, we have one Sinister Serpent. Um, this is just here because it's a discard target. Um, it's pre-ratted because um, back then, this was the only card text for it. During a standby phase, if there's a Sinister Serpent in your graveyard, you're gonna this card from your graveyard to your hand. Um, it didn't used to be one, 
Uh, now it's limited to one per turn. It didn't used to be, so if you had more than one, which was basically impossible back then, because I believe it was limited. Um, then you could just add a tent. And then one copy of Exiled Forest, just for, again, outs to the biggest threat on the board. Like a Magical Warrior, because that's basically the. One, it's one of the very few, uh, one of the very few cases of back row removal that we have, um, here, so, I just feel it helps, plus, if you, it, it, you know, if for nothing else, it's a 19k beat stick, which is good, um, another personal tech in, in, in the deck is one copy of Jinzo, just to stop their traps, um, from going off, which was basically our only form of defense back in the day, so it was good. It's really good, and finally to run off our, round off our one of monsters, one copy of BLS, because this card is just insanity. Attacking for 3k, being able to banish anything, um, being able to attack multiple targets, um, I mean, it's, whew, this card, uh, moving on. To the doubles, we have double nice sandwich. It's because it was similar limited at the time. The way this works is you target one monster, uh, your opponent controls and pop it, which is already a great card. But when it's sent from hand to the graveyard, you can target a flip effect monster in the graveyard, except this one, and add it to your hand, which is really great for a cycling just in the face to get to continually bring back pot of greed, to continually bring back. Graceful Charity, Lightning War, Tech Snatch, Deal, basically just whatever you want to do playing back the game, as long as it's a quick effect on Alt Monster, and as long as Magician of Faith keeps getting flipped, you can keep adding spells from going back to hand. Uh, we also are running Double and uh, Parshaf, just because it's one of the only four cards in the deck that can pierce. Um, so, of course, back in the day, especially in Dope Format, when it was just continually boards full of cheap tokens. Uh, 19k. <laughs> I'm sorry, I keep saying that one in the middle. 1.9k is a lot. Plus, I mean, you do get a card off of it, which is really nice. Because if you draw into Night Assailant, you can get that rid of that mor morphing jar, and then boom, you plus off of it. And if you really were lucky, you would morphing jar into the two copies of Night Assailant in your hand, or maybe a Sinister Serpent and both copies of Night Assailant if you're really lucky. Discard those and get those back. Um, you can also do the same thing with Graceful Charity. Uh, finally turned off the 12 monsters, double Xeran universe. This card was actually at 3 at the time. Um, I'm just running at 2 for deck space, and because I really like this card, but Parshak is a little bit better. Um, and of course the best way to summon him is to snatch steal to steal your opponent's monster. There's one game where I felt so dirty. I used to snatch steal it, steal someone's BLS and I attributed it all for <laughs> for Parshas. Oh they were so mad. Oh oh my god, they just they just got up and left. And th this wasn't even I I I you guys don't understand. This wasn't even me playing the children's card game online. I was at an actual tournament. Granted not a big one. It was just my locals. Uh we were playing some games for fun. Um we were playing GOAT format, and I snatched Steel because I took control of his monster, his BLS, which was a back at one, and it was the best card in the deck. Tributed it all for my part, so I was like, F it, I'm done. He just took his cards, and just got up and walked off, which is just, oh. <laughs> and those are his exact words, too, just, I'm done. Oh. Anyway, oh. Oh, it's great. Finally, Triple Magician of Faith. This card was at, uh, this card was at three also. You can run as many copies as you wanted to. I don't run Royal Magic Librarian or whatever that cockroach is called because I just don't like it. 
Um, I, I just don't like it. That's why I'm buying this at three. Also, we saw the spells. Um, don't run on the golf cart of monsters. The spells were on one copy of Zone Zone Duo well for the mask. This card is basically a twin twisters for the hand. Um, you know how we stand? Um, would be next up. I don't run a mage card because that's just. That's basically impossible to run because of how conditional it is. The United Restand is amazing, especially when you consider all those goat tokens to fill up the board and a BLS to banish and uh, or attack twice, or even if it's a BLS direct attack, it's guaranteed to win basically. Um, Lightning Vortex, just for more board wipes. Um, we don't actually really have any board wipes besides Heavy Storm, which is just a spawn trap board wipe, so uh, I figure if we have a front row, if we have a back row board wipe, not a front row board wipe. Moving on, we also have one pot of greed just because, you know, plus one, ugh, the plus one is so strong, it just has to be banned. Uh, snatch deal for the combo I mentioned earlier, Parshath, race for charity to draw three and then discard two. Ideally, it's going to be a Sinister Serpent and a Night Assailant, or a Double Night Assailant. Some combination of Sinister Serpent, Night Assailant, and a Flip Effect Monster that you don't want, or that more specifically you want in the grave. Swords are revealing light, just because it swords are revealing light, and who is going to come out solid. Um, I mainly use this as fodder to bait out the MST. Um, which I'm just running for a spawn trap removal, so that's pretty good. Um, heavy storm from SST removal. SST spin with the standing horse for spawn traps. And then that one I got off from one of the two of us, double scapegoat, because, you know, it's scapegoat. Double upstart goblin, because, again, draw power and getting more cards in hand. Hopefully to get the Sinister Serpent and the Assailant to Magician of Faith to pitch the grave. Double Road Up because we only have two search targets in the deck anyway. Being G Warrior Lady and Exile Force. Um, otherwise, it's just basically discard water. Um, after that, we have No Woman of Cross Out. Just for good old. Well, Basically anything that will provide itself, which there's a ton of monsters that get triggered off being set and flits face up, so it just really helps. Um, just going back to your previous combo real fast, you can actually use Rhoda as pitch for discard fodder for a graceful charity, or even if you really wanted to for a hand destruction to draw back the extra card if your opponent carries it. But anyway. And we want to traps, we have Call of the Haunted, just to bring back the monster. Uh, mainly this will be used on BLS or Parsha, but, you know, if there's something else, then more power to you. Then there's one Mirror Force, just because it's Mirror Force, one Magic Cylinder, because it's Magic Cylinder. And finally, one Flame of Destruction. Anyway guys, that's going to be it for this deck profile. I hope you guys did like it, because this is my personal take on it, and I just sat down with the band I created it myself. Um, compared to a GOAT Control deck, which I guess is ba this is basically GOAT Control, it's called GOAT Chaos, because I originally were Chaos Sorcerers, but I just took them out. Um, but anyway, that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I've been your host, Progress Phoenix, signing out. See you guys next time. Have a good one.